we're going to do a little bit of stuff uh, after chapter 1.1. Uh, talk a little bit about functions, uh, some of their properties, some important aspects about those. Uh, then the last, oh, I'd say half hour class maybe, um, I have a uh, diagnostic test that you're all going to uh, participate in. Uh, it's not a graded test, it's just simply an opportunity for me to see where everyone is in the class in terms of your ability to come out and stuff like that. So uh, it's not graded. Um, I do want you to do your best on it, uh, so I can get an idea of sort of where uh, you are and how much work you guys may need to put in outside of the calculus study in order to get up to speed and make sure you're ready to go. Okay? So, that being said, let's go ahead and talk a little bit about functions. Uh, I said last time that functions are sort of the background of what calculus is doing. I mean, calculus is all about analyzing functions, how functions change. Uh, what kind of important properties they have. Uh, today we're going to just going to talk a little bit about some of those important properties of functions and see what we uh, recall. So, functions can be expressed in lots of different ways. There's lots of ways of defining functions, lots of ways of presenting functions. Uh, some of the common ways that functions are presented is with equations. Oftentimes you'll see a, uh, a function given by some sort of y equals f of x. That's typically how we see functions displayed, right? Um, examples of things like that, well, let's see, something like y equals 2x plus 5. Uh, it's an example of a function given in equation form. Uh, y equals x squared plus 3x minus 2. Okay? Y equals uh, 1 over 2x plus 1. These are all examples of equations that are representing functions. Outside of this, how else can we display functions? How else can we express um, that we have some sort of relationship or, or function in terms of um, you know, some way that we can commonly uh, identify? Well, when we're talking about functions, let's back up a second. When we're talking about functions, we need to be careful about what we mean by a function. Okay? What is a function? What's the definition of a function? example of an equation, y equals x squared plus 25, or sorry, change that slightly, y squared plus x squared equals 25, okay. If I wanted to, I could take this equation and solve for y, okay. if I put in an x, I could get out a y. Is this equation representative of a function? may have ideas as to what this is a equation for, and that's fine. Um, this equation right here does not represent the equation of a function. Okay? This is not a function. Why? Because if you put something in for y or x, you just have to square it. Don't you need it? In not necessarily. Okay. Not necessarily. Okay? Um, if we go back to sort of the basics of what functions are. Functions are rules. That's all a function is. It's a rule. It's a rule that says, if you give me some sort of input value, I can tell you how to get one output value that goes with that specific input. Okay? You can think of it as a mysterious black box. In one side goes your x put, your x's. Out the other side comes some sort of output, which is typically referred to as y. Okay? So all a function is, is a rule that takes inputs, which typically people call x's, and outputs a unique value for that x. The outputs, again, typically are referred to as y's. Right? The letters involved here are really arbitrary. You don't have to have inputs as x's. You've got inputs called s's 
or inputs called smiley faces. The outputs could be anything you wanted as well. Right? Typically we use Y's and X's because that's just what we've used for so long. Okay? But this is what a function is. It's just a rule. Key thing here is that the rule for each X value gives us only one Y value. Okay? I can't input two different X's and get the same Y value out. Or sorry, I can't input one X and get two different Y values out. Okay? That's one of the problems with this equation right here, is that there are certain X values I can put in and get two different Y values out. For example, if we look at Y that's in the function, if you choose X equals zero, if I put x equals zero into this equation, what y values do I get out? Right here I have two different y values, which tells us right away that this equation cannot represent a function. Okay? The input x has to have a unique output value, only one value that goes with that specific x. Okay? Alright, you can verify, if you wish, that all of these equations over here satisfy this rule. Okay? Each, each x value has a specific out that, uh, output value for it. Okay, so these are all functions given as an equation. How else can we express functions? Well, we can also use pictures to represent functions. Typically, we refer to those pictures as graphs. Graphs can help us display functions as well. And again, sort of as a general rule, when we graph things, we graph things on an axis like this. The horizontal values are called x's, the vertical values are called y's. Okay? These x values represent all of our inputs, the y values represent all of our outputs. Um, examples of functions here, again, pictures can give us good ways of visualizing what a function looks like or what it does. Okay. This is an example of a function. I'll draw a couple others up here and what I want to do is how does this rule, how does this rule take, how, how is it interpreted in terms of these graphs? How can we interpret this rule in terms of these graphs? And let me draw a couple more up here before you uh, give me an answer to that. graphs here, these pictures, all represent graphs of functions. Okay? Go back over here to this example that is not a function. If we graph this picture, many of you probably realize that this graph or this uh, equation